Yo, interoperability is really the name of the game in crypto. Also one of the core focuses here on my YouTube channel, Cryptocito, because I believe in a multi-chain future. I believe that in the future we'll have hundreds of thousands, eventually millions of blockchains that all have application specific use cases and will all be able to seamlessly communicate and interoperate with each other. That's why I'm extremely excited to be partnering with FMOS which is one of the most highly anticipated Cosmos chains that provides full EVM compatibility. That means full Ethereum compatibility and is about to go live as soon as early January. This means that over the next couple of months, there will be a lot of content here around FMOS on this channel. That said, please make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel, number one. Number two, like this video and share it with one or two friends. And number three, also make sure to watch the entire thing. All right, so right after watching this video, I also strongly recommend you to watch my interview with Federico Kunze, who is one of the co-founders of Tarsis, which is the development company behind FMOS, right? And previously, FMOS was called Ethermint. It actually has a long history in crypto. It's been around for a couple of years, also from the Ethereum side. But today, I want to give a brief overview of what FMOS actually tries to become and tries to do, and also where they currently stand. So let's dive into it right now. So the project was basically revived in uh, early 2021 with this proposal predominantly, where uh, proposal 44 on the Cosmos Hub, where 100,000 atoms were requested to basically fund and develop and advance the Ethermint project and to launch an Ethermint chain. And I've talked to a couple of people also um, from the Ethereum side, from the Ethereum Foundation, they said, man, this project idea was actually always really, really cool to kind of like bridge and connect um, the EVM, the Ethereum virtual machine with Tendermint, right? With the Cosmos world. Um, this was all pre-IBC. This was where IBC was still far, far away. Um, but then around that time when IBC shipped, which is the inter-blockchain communication protocol that connects all Cosmos chains, um, the idea for creating an EVM compatible Cosmos chain became even more realistic, right? So the original guys who have worked on this, I don't know actually who was that, um, but I think Federico Kunze who was one of the um, people that was very, very early on in this. Um, they wrote this proposal. They got 98.3% uh, approval rate. So um, this went through pretty quickly. 63% uh, almost uh, participated in the voting. So they got the 100,000 atoms um, and this really, really jump-started the process so that within less than a year, they kind of like realized this vision, right? And we're about to see the mainnet going live, right? We're currently in the incentivized test and I'll, go, I'll, I'll be talking about this in a second. This was the original proposal. Um, Ethermint was originally introduced in late 2016 as a proof of concept uh, project, as a proof of concept project that ran in Ethereum smart contracts on Tenement using proof of stake. Yes, this is 2016, way before proof of stake was even mainstream or even in the big discussion to be a disruptor for proof of work, right? Um, and now Ethereum itself is switching to proof of stake. So in my opinion, as I see a lot of these Cosmos chains um, that um, I'm researching are way ahead of their time, even Cosmos, the Cosmos hub itself, right? Um, so I think this is really exciting. Um, and uh, the core people at um, Tarsis now, which is the company behind it, um, is our, our Federico. I already had him on my channel and also Akash, right? So both have also been at the um, Cosmoverse conference in Lisbon. So I got the uh, honor to have been uh, talking with both of them. Really, really nice guys. And um, yeah, we have been in touch ever since. And I'm a big fan of what they do. Also, obviously, my dad, Wes Moncton, is a big, big fan and a big shill of Ethermint um, or FMOS. So that's why I'm really excited to be partnering with them and, um, yeah, create a lot of content. And I think it also makes a lot of sense for me to go deeper into less projects instead of having to spread myself really, really thin about many, many, many projects, right? And I think Ethermint or FMOS is in a great, great, great position to become the Ethereum on Cosmos hub, right? So this is really exciting. And um, this article actually was the introduction to Ethermint. Um, funny enough, was written by Peng Zhang, who is now the CEO over at Tenement. Um, but this is Mar May 2017, right? That's uh, four years ago. So really uh, exciting to see that this project has had a lot of backing in the past and it has a lot of backing 
today. So if you're excited uh, and want to learn more about the history, read these articles, uh, read the original proposal. There's also a lot of like links where you can like walk through um, you know, some of the issues they had back then. Also this article itself. So um, yeah, please read through that um, so that you get a full context of Ethermint. Now, if we take a look at their Twitter, we can see that they don't even have 10,000 followers, right? So please, number one, make sure you go over and follow them here to get them over 10K as soon as possible. Um, and also that's where you stay up to date. They also have um, community calls weekly where you can also ask questions. And that's where they also announce partnerships, right? So they already partnered with a bunch of um, players in the crypto space to make it easier for um, developers to build on FMOS, right? Because that's the main thing now. FMOS is a basically a layer one chain. It's an application specific layer one, which is what most chains in Cosmos are with their own validator set. It's an own sovereign blockchain that is EVM compatible. And that means that on top of FMOS, you can now realize a lot of use cases if you want to merge EVM, like the Ethereum world with Cosmos, right? because you can seamlessly and easily transfer back and forth between both ecosystems. And this is something that they need to really, really focus hard on. And I think there's also already a lot of uh, things in the pipeline is to get um, a lot of projects to build or migrate on top of FMOS, right? And I think that's something that we will see in the next weeks and months. So here's their website, fmos.org. Um, they're currently in the incentivized testnet and FMOS obviously stands for EVM plus Cosmos. So it's F EVM. OS, basically, EVM OS or whatever you want to call it. And um, what it basically enables um, as FMOS is built in the Cosmos SDK and implements IBC, um, it kind of like brings fast finality to Ethereum itself, right? It can also offload a lot of traffic from Ethereum and bring it into an interoperable Cosmos world. So that's something that I'm personally really, really excited about because Right now, there is not many projects that really, really focus on seamless, decentralized interoperability, right? You have a lot of centralized bridges. You have a lot of um, kind of like points of failure um, in that process. But in FMOS, you have a decentralized way since you have EVM compatibility natively built in the chain from launch. And this is how it's going to be look like in the future. You have FMOS, the FMOS chain in the middle, and then you have a lot of these Ethermint chains that are all packed through FMOS, which is then compatible to Ethereum and to the Cosmos world, right? So you have um, compatibility with, for example, Uniswap and Osmosis at the same time, right? Which is pretty cool. And you can uh, obviously do a lot of different things with it, right? And um, different use cases, different yield strategies, different, um, yeah, user experiences. Um, in this article, they also explain a little bit of the background, um, how it began, who was behind it, um, and also Vitalik, who is kind of like at least um, aware that Tenement is actually pretty cool, right? So he has stated in this article here that um, a need for a Tenement-like consensus model for Ethereum beacon chain would not be a bad idea, right? So that's why um, I think a lot of eyes are now shifting over to Cosmos also in the bigger picture. And Vitalik also just released another article on December 6th called Endgame, where he basically talks about scaling issues and how to resolve them, where he also talks a little bit about interoperability and even mentions Cosmos. And there's a lot of cool replies from Cosmonauts, obviously, since he mentioned Cosmos, they're like, man, this is actually Cosmos that you're describing here. And Federico also replied that um, one quote from the from the post that Vitalik uh, made um, from his blog post, it will take years of refinement and audits for people to be fully comfortable storing their assets in a Z ZK rollup running a full EVM. Actually, next year with Celestia and FMOS, right? So this is really, really exciting because Celestia focuses on data availability. Vit Vitalik also talks a lot about this in his paper and um, um, rollups. And then FMOS tries to become this interoperable Ethereum hub on Cosmos. And this is a screenshot of your photons. Um, and this is obviously in a testnet, but still um, of photons on your MetaMask um, to show basically that this actually already is here. It's already there, right? And next year is going to be on mainnet early next year. So this is really, really exciting. And I think this could really become a bang for Cosmos to go on everyone's map, on everyone's radar. So currently FMOS is an incentivized testnet phase um, which just went live a few weeks ago, and they will launch the mainnet in the second week of uh, January, I think, right? So that's currently the plan. 
Um, I'm really, really looking forward to that. And I think over the next weeks, we'll also hear more details about potential public sale. They're also right now working on an airdrop. So they're still refining the details around the airdrop. I think that's one of their main priorities right now. Um, and then the question is, how will it be rolled out, right? I've also heard in the last community call that um, people were asking about the CoinList page that is showing up for FMOS on CoinList. And um, Federico said that this is just a technical integration that they have. It doesn't mean that there's going to be a public sale on CoinList. Um, could be, I don't even know. But um, yeah, nothing is official yet. So please wait for official um, announcements here. And also the best you can do still is follow them here on Twitter, join the Discord and also join their Telegram group. Always join the Telegram group through the official website because otherwise there's so much scam out there. Um, don't just type in FMOS on Telegram and join. Most likely it's gonna be a scam. Do it through the official links and also make sure that all the original people are in there. Um, and there's also a lot of questions and you see a lot of people are joining. So this thing is going really quickly. All right, and lastly, what you can do right now, you can see here in Kepler Labs here, if you go on Kepler, you can view test nets that are currently ongoing. And then you can see here, we have three test nets right now live, the Axelar network and also FMOS as well as Sommelier. And if you go on FMOS, you can see actually there's a long, long list of validators. Actually 300 validators are um, in the in the testnet phase right now, which is pretty, pretty cool. And um, yeah, I think there has been also huge, huge demand from, from the development, developer community and also from validators to run nodes on FMOS. So I think this will launch with a bang, um, depending obviously also on the market sentiment, right? If Bitcoin and Ethereum go down dramatically, um, <clears throat> it could also mean that the bang that FMOS could have upon launch um, is less, right? Because it always depends on the market sentiment, right? It's very, very um, volatile in crypto. Um, so that's nothing new. And um, yeah, so please play around with this, um, follow FMOS and I hope you enjoyed this video today. I hope you learned something. I hope you have something to like start your own research from. And um, yeah, let me know what you think about FMOS. Let me know if you already have played around with the testnet and I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay safe and be good.